concept of Excel tables comes from the database world, where you have to work and process a lot of data. Excel tables were designed to help you create data models, define relationships, sort and filter data to find what you're looking for very, very quickly. In this video, we will look at the how you can take full advantage of this exciting new functionality in Microsoft Excel. You can create Excel table on the ribbon interface or using Ctrl-T shortcut on your keyboard. To create an Excel table, you need to select the range you're trying to convert into a table and then go to Insert tab and click Table. Excel prompts you if this is the range you would like to convert into a table and you can confirm that. It also prompts you if the table has headers. In my case, uh, row 1 contains table headers, so I just need to click OK. And table has been created. Let me show you another way how table could be created. I'm going to click Undo button here to go back to a range. And then instead of clicking uh, anything on the ribbon, I will click Control T on the keyboard and I'll go through the same process of table creation. I'm going to click OK and you see table has been created. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign name to the table. Keep in mind that uh, name cannot contain spaces or special characters. So I'm going to name my table as uh, expenses. But you can as well name it operating expenses. But in that case, you would need to use uh, two words uh, together. For example, something like this. Another important consideration, as you can see, once table has been created, now you have access to table design options on the ribbon. Sometimes you may need to revert Excel table back into the regular Excel range. Let's look at how you can do it quickly in Microsoft Excel. To resize data in Microsoft Excel table, you need to navigate to Table Design tab. Obviously, you need to have the table selected or any cell in the table selected to make this Table Design tab available and visible to you. And then once you have uh, any cell selected, you click Convert to Range. Excel prompts you for the confirmation, do you really want to convert table into a normal range? You click yes here. And after that, table gets quickly converted into the regular range. It doesn't look much different, but if you compare, because I have copies, I have two tabs here. One would be a regular range, and then I have the same information in the Excel table. For the table, you can quickly identify that you have automatically selected sorting and filtering capabilities, and you have table design option available. If we go to copy of that tab, no matter where you select on this range, there is no table design tab available and sorting and filtering capabilities are not available by default. If you would like to remove formatting, which was originally applied to the table, now you have to select the entire range. And after you selected the range, you would need to select one of the styles that you would like. By default, Excel applies normal style, so you might as well select normal style to start over. Sometimes, you may need to create a copy of Excel table or remove Excel table from your worksheet. The easiest way to create a copy of Excel table is to create a copy of the worksheet. To do that, you need to right mouse click on Excel worksheet title and select move or copy. Then select the worksheet, in my case, it's company's operating expenses, and then click create a copy. Now, if you go to the original worksheet, and go and select any cell on the table name, click on the table design, you see that original table name is table expenses. If we go into the copy of the worksheet, company operating expenses 2, and then do the same thing, we see that the new table name is company expenses 4. And the reason it's 4 is because I created multiple duplicates before, uh, but it incrementally adds the numeric value to the new table name. To remove Excel table, you just need to remove the worksheet. To do that, you need to right mouse click and then cl click delete on the worksheet title and then confirm the deletion. If you would like to be able to solve your problems faster, please make sure to check out my ebook store and download ebook on the related topic. All links to the ebooks are in the description of this video. Unlike regular Excel ranges, where you need to manually add sorting and filtering functionality, you can sort and filter data in Excel tables right from the start. Sorting and filtering capabilities come automatically with each and every Excel table. To take advantage of sorting and filtering, you need to use drop down at the first header of the Excel table. You have options of sorting A to Z, sorting Z to A, sorting by color, and using some text filters. For example, 
The easiest way to sort is just click sort A to Z. With this type of sort, Excel organizes the data in alphabetical order. You can easily sort using the values in another column. For example, if you'd like to sort based on the estimated column, you can say largest to smallest, and you see what Excel did. It removed the sorting capabilities in column A and added sorting capabilities in column B. You can apply filtering on top of sorting. For example, we have column estimated sorted right now from the highest to lowest values. Now, if we'd like to add a filter, we just need to click on the drop down box and select the values that we would like to use and have here. And Excel selects the values and recalculates the total in the row 22. To remove the filter, you navigate to column C where we have filter applied. And instead of having specific values selected, we just need to click on select all and then we reapply it and remove the filter. To remove sorting in Excel table, you need to select the drop down box in the column based on which it was sorted and then navigate to sort by color, click custom sort and here you see that it was sorted by estimated cell values and current sort order is the largest to smallest. So what we need to do, we need to delete this level and click OK. And this is how you remove sorting. Sometimes you may need to have more flexibility and you maybe need to be able to sort and find values that are larger than certain amount. To use this capability, you click on the column for which you would like to apply this sorting. You click on the drop down box, click number filters and select appropriate filters. For the business problem we're trying to solve, the most valid uh, method of sorting will be greater than. And we select here that the values are greater than maybe $20,000. Click OK. And you see that Excel filtered out and selected only the values that are greater than $20,000. To remove this filter, you click on the drop down box and click Select All. Excel table supports different design options to present information more effectively. You can use quick formatting options, banded rows and columns display header row and totals, and do some other functions that help you process information quickly. To access Excel table formatting options, you need to click on any cell in the table, and then you can see the table design tab shows up in the ribbon. It provides you a lot of different options. For example, you see that by default, header row, banded rows, and filter button are selected. Header row is responsible for the first row that shows the description of the table columns. Banded rows shows that every other row is a different color, so you can easily identify that row. And filter buttons show the drop down boxes in the header row. When you have filter buttons available, you can quickly sort and filter data in Excel table. Let's look at other formatting options for Excel table. For example, if you need to quickly identify first column, you can select it and it will put them in bold so you can quickly know if you have multiple columns which one is the first column. Same applies to the last column. If you select this option, then you will always see the a last column highlighted with the bold. Similar to the banded rows, there are also banded columns. So every other column would be in a different color. It is not very noticeable right now, but if we uncheck banded rows, then you can see that every other column is highlighted with a different color. And last but not least is the total row. Total row allows you to automatically calculate totals for the last column. One of the biggest benefits of Excel tables is its ability to extend automatically to support data entry. For example, to add additional data into Excel table, all you need to do is just start typing. And as you can see, Excel extends the table. This is the indication of the table end, the small um, angle and corner uh, at the end of the table, which shows where table ends. It was extended from the internet expenses into financial fees. Another way to insert the new data into Excel table is when you are at the last cell of the table, just click the tab button. And as you can see, insert just adds a new row and you can just start typing. You might have noticed that Excel table header row is always visible. It is not noticeable right now, 
but if you make this file smaller and you can start scrolling, you see that operating expense category estimated and actual are always visible. In fact, they become a part of the header of the column name. Having them always available is a big benefit when you're doing data entry for the table that has a lot of rows. How would you solve the challenges described in this video? Could you please share your thoughts in the comments of this video? Thank you very much. A lot of times, you may need to ensure data integrity for Excel tables data. For example, you might want to ensure that user can't enter text into numeric columns. To ensure data integrity in Excel table, you need to apply validation rules. To do that, you need to select the column for which you would like to apply rules, and then navigate to the Data tab and click on Data Validation button. Then you select Data Validation and you populate the values. There are three tabs in Data Validation input box. In the Settings box, you decide what type of validation would you like to apply. Then you have an opportunity to create an input message with title and then the message itself. And then you decide what kind of error you would give to the user in case users do not comply with the validation that you just put together. In our case, we're trying to create validation to make sure that the actual is actually a numeric value. To do that, we would need to select the whole number and then make sure that the number is, for example, between zero, which actual cannot be less than zero, uh, and maybe 10 million. We would want to alert the user that we put this types of restriction on this particular column. To do that, we need to define an input message. And our input message would indicate that there is a number limit supplied for this column. For example, the message might be entered number should be above zero, but less than 10 million. And as the last step, we would need to define what type of error alert we would want to show to the user. For the style of alert, you can either stop any action and prevent user from entering the data, or you can do just warning or maybe just do an informational message. In our case, we will do a stop type of style so user stops entering the data until they fix the issue. For the title of the error message, we will just uh, do a message, please fix this error. And for the message itself, we'll enter, enter number should be above zero, but less than 10 million. Now I can click OK. Excel shows the limitations applied to this particular column. So the message that we entered now shows up as a tooltip. There are limits applied. Entered number should be above zero, but less than 10 million. And even if we scroll the data, the message continues to stay and shows up. Now let's see what happens when we enter the data that is not within those limits. For example, if I enter in the actual column values that are not numeric, let's see what happens. We get this error message that we predefined. Entered number should be above zero, but less than 10 million. And we can retry and fix the error. Uh, and then click the top button and that allows us to proceed. If you realize that you don't need data validation on Excel table, you can remove it. To remove data validation, you select any cell in that column that contains data validation, then click data validation button. And then here in the first settings tab, we would need to uncheck and put any value. Then we need to remove the message and make sure that we uncheck this box and then we remove the error alert and uncheck this box. Now all data validations have been removed. Sometimes you may need to resize Excel tables to add or remove data columns. Removing of data columns is very easy with Excel tables. You just need to select the column you're trying to remove and then say delete and Excel automatically shortens and resizes the table. Adding additional data to Excel table is very easy. You just need to start typing. Once I typed category, as you can see, Excel added additional column, and now you just need to start populating the values. Once data is entered, you can format it and make it look the same as the rest of the table. To do that, you need to use Format Painter. That's the easiest and fastest way to do it. So select any cell in the area where you would like to use uh, formatting. So for example, we could use Format Painter from any area that existed before. And then we'll select the area where we entered new category items. And as you can see, new format was applied. Excel allows you quickly to change formatting and design of table by using Excel table styles. You can remove styles 
if you're not happy with your current selection, or define brand new style based on your preferred formatting options. To change style of the Excel table, you need to put the cursor into any cell within the table, then navigate to Table Design, and here there are many table styles available. You can pick from the custom styles, light style, medium styles, or dark styles, and Excel will apply any type of style that you will select automatically. You can also clear the style that you've selected by navigating to the Clear option, and you can also define your own new style for Excel table. To define new style, you would need to give definitions to the whole table, first column, stripe, second stripe, and everything here on the screen that's selected. To do that, you just select the option, click Format, and select the options you're looking for. I would like to hear back from you. Which topics would you like me to cover on this channel? Could you please post them in the comments of this video? Thank you very much. Excel Slicer allows you to filter data for Excel table using easy-to-understand user interface. To enable Excel Slicer, you need to put the cursor into any cell within the current Excel table, click on the Table Design tab, and click Insert Slicer. Here you can select the columns based on which would you like to slice the data. Since concept of slicing is very similar to concept of filtering, what we can do, we can select the category as a slicer and click OK. Now I should be able to quickly select all the items in the particular category. So for example, if I want fees, I just need to click on the fees option. And Excel filters out and select all the items that have fees as a category. You can do others. You can do the same thing for technology, for example. Or if you hold the shift button, you can select multiple items. Another option to multi-select is this button in the category uh, user interface. You need to click on this and do multi-select. To remove all the slices, you need to click the bottom clear filter. Pivot table allows you to quickly group and filter the data. To visualize the data in Excel table, to quickly find answers to the business questions. To create pivot table from Excel table, you need to select any cell in Excel table, click on the table design options, and then click summarize with pivot table. Excel offers you to create pivot table based on the table name, so you want to make sure that this is the right table that you're creating pivot table from, and you want to choose if you want to do it in existing worksheet or in a new worksheet. In our case, we will do it in the new worksheet. So Excel created a new worksheet named Sheet 3, and this is the pivot table which doesn't have anything selected. But on the right-hand side, we do have all the columns from the Excel table. The easiest way to start working with pivot tables is to select all the fields that you're trying to include in your data visualization. In my case, I'm going to select all the fields. I'm also going to expand column A to see the entire description. I will also expand column Bs and C to make sure all the data fits. As you can see, presented data doesn't make any sense because the grouping is not correct. Excel groups the data by operating expenses instead of grouping it by category. And in original Excel table, category is the grouping for operating expenses. To fix that, we would need to change the sequence of the items in the row section of the pivot table. I'm going to drag, select and drag category and put it on top of operating expenses. And now data makes total sense. We have fees and then all the items, all the operating expenses are grouped by the categories. So fees, one of the categories, dues and subscription, insurance fees and legal and auditing fees are items within the fees category. Once you're done building the pivot table, you can make data more presentable by selecting the values and formatting them with the currency sign. For example, in my case, I'll add a dollar sign selection and you will see that for every numeric value, it converted it into currency value, which is started with the dollar sign. If you found this content valuable, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and share with your friends to help them learn faster. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.